Because if my mum just contacted her since it's been beaten up by her boyfriend and one of the neighbours in the street just rang up as well to confirm this is domestic. Coming out in the domestic violence car has helped Weaside women in need reach a lot more women and you reach them at a crisis point. We will attend incidents when they happen um, after the perpetrator has been removed and see what sort of support we can offer. Um, and that could be anything from providing a mobile phone so that woman can contact the police if she needs to, to transporting her to someone else's address, or it could be that we look for refuge space. Wearside Women in Need are a specialist organisation who've been helping victims of domestic abuse in Sunderland for over 30 years. Last year their funding was cut mm -hmm. by more than 50%. Good afternoon, we're Side Women in Need. Our refuges are mainly full all of the time. We're always under pressure to provide a service which isn't a ticky box exercise, which isn't a come through the door and everybody has the same needs. It's tailored to that individual person. More and more though what we get is women with post-traumatic stress disorder, mental health issues, drug and alcohol issues. Um, women who have sometimes lost their children because of the abuse. Ian, he's just rang us to see if we can and see someone who's been assaulted. We've just had a phone She's call. She's not on the database? No, so we don't know her. She's a new woman. Ah, right. She's in Ian, but she's got mental health problems and stuff. How long has she got a lot of information? Mm -hmm. I think she's 61. Oh, so we're getting a lot of older women now, you know. Cuts in funding have already forced Wearside women in need to close one of their refuges. Ah, oh, it's just so frustrating. Because they haven't got a clue about domestic violence, the complexities. They think a slap is like domestic violence. A slap is a slap, it's an act of violence. But domestic violence is a pattern of behaviour. You know, there's lots of abuses intertwined. Can you for the house meeting now, everyone? So yeah, thank you for turning up, everybody. First off, we've got a new woman coming in with five children. Wow. What's going to happen is she's going to come into flat one and the three women yeah. in flat one are going to move up into flat yes. seven. And we would like to welcome Daddy. Rosie. Hi, Rosie. This is, a, this is like, it would be for me and my kids. Like the kids and then me. But my kids aren't with us at the minute. Rosie's children went to live with their father when Rosie became involved in a subsequent abusive relationship. And these are all my pictures and me and my kids. And that's me five reasons why I fight each day. I got, well, a partner that wasn't very nice. And he hurt us bad. And said uh, he could kill us, so they've moved us away. Beforehand, I just thought it was as normal. I think I clicked on that that blow to the head. I've never felt ringing in my head like it. And I clicked on I could kill us and he just actually scares us now. What's your name? Oh. Me, in my room most of the day. Rosie came to us um, fleeing her partner. There was lots of coping mechanisms that Rosie used to deal with the abuse. Eventually the children were removed from her. Rosie, this minute in time is totally turning her life round so she can get her children back. Uh, she's had a clean drug test recently. She's doing the Freedom Programme. She really gets it. She can acknowledge all of the tactics used by perpetrators of abuse. So this week, the Freedom Programme is about the bully. Mm -hmm. Yeah? Mm -hmm. The bully is excellent at using his body language to intimidate us. Yeah, I've had that. Can you elaborate on that? Yep, I can elaborate on all of this. Accusing us of cheating. Oh, right. mm -hmm. The stay. Mm -hmm. You better pack it in, I'm telling you, I'm warning you. You better pack it in, smashing both me tellies. Mm -hmm. You get beat up, Abuzi, I'm telling you now, it's the worst thing you could ever do in your life, so I'll torture you for the rest of your life. No, I remember how scared I was. Last year, Northumbria Police received over 32,000 calls reporting incidents of domestic abuse. What time did that one come in? Domestic. Perpetrators of domestic violence don't just give up. He has invested a lot of energy in controlling that person's life. The police can't sit outside of a house 24 hours a day. And, you know, women are murdered by men. We supply data to the council. They know how many people we get referred in. We had 600 referrals just in the last quarter for outreach support. 
But if that's the case, why are services being cut? That can only explain that as women's and children's safety and well-being is not paramount. I'm on the street now with a male assaulting a female. Could a female possibly be knocked out? Yeah, he's got one said AV and violence, weapon warning, domestic. He had a large accident behind his door. Well, it turns out that the neighbours actually pulled her off him. Is she getting arrested? I don't think so because there's, there's no complaint from him. He's obviously hanging around up there waiting for her. There's definitely a domestic violence history because she's open oh, to yeah, us. Oh, yeah, You have the other job at Gillis Lane. We'll go down. Busy, busy tonight. If the refuges weren't there, if we need to take someone into a place of safety, where we're going to take them. I do know that we would lose lives in Sunderland because if there is no refuges, then where do women go to keep safe? Hi, I've got uh, Rosie here and she said that her little boy is poorly today. Rosie wants to really see him, obviously, so I'm just getting your go-ahead, really. I just didn't get it at first. I felt like I'm the one being abused and then I've got my kids took off me. But then I started to realise. I don't want my kids to be damaged like I am. And I, I said that from the start, because it messes me your head. And they deserve a hundred times better and they don't deserve to see the mum sitting there every day crying or shouting and other men treating their mum like that in front of them. She does this voluntary for the food bank yeah, and she's brought all of these today. When I was going through all of that situation, I never thought anybody would ever love me again or I will ever love someone again. But now everything's, you know, changed. Thankfully, my kids are back. I don't rent anymore. You know, I've got my husband and... You bought a house? Yeah. You know, it's, it's, uh, at that time when I lost well, everything, I was, you know, yeah, I didn't recognise you. Yeah. Yeah. So can't have a yeah, thing just, just, just it bought, can happen to me. Just, just bought our, our first house last September. Yeah. So, yeah. But I might end up like that. Yes, yes, <laughs> you will, you will, definitely. We have hundreds of women who we work with on an outreach basis as well as in the refuges and they all know that if they're in danger 999 like we're the fourth emergency service and then we aside women in need sometimes the phone us before the phone the police women who we're already working with yeah it, it's vital that refuge provision is saved <laughs> um, and what are your hopes for the future now? A little house with me and my kids. I don't want to be going to sleep cuddling bowling pins and curtain poles again. I'm not frightened myself of going, I'm frightened of what I'm going to leave behind. Yeah. Your kids? And, uh, yeah, I don't want them growing up without a mummy, thinking mummy didn't care. In November last year, Rosie's ex-boyfriend was found guilty of criminal damage to property and two counts of assault by beating. He was sentenced to 20 weeks. Rosie's completed rehab and moved out of the refuge. She now has a job. Her children still live with their father and she sees them twice a week. Out of the three remaining refuges in Sunderland, two are under threat of closure due to cuts in funding.